I solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And if I am found to be lying, I accept prosecution under the full extent of the sports law. Yeah, guys, it's here. Week one is, in, what's that, Thursday, Friday, three days away. I've been telling you guys, man, once football season gets here, once fantasy football season is here, Sports in Order, best show, best fantasy football show on the internet. And it starts today. It starts today. Today I'm giving you the top five at each position for week one. Now we can actually make a, you know, give you some, some real quality content. These, these projections that I'm going to give you and the top five at each position, I put a lot of research into it. So it should help you. So hopefully you listen, you heed my advice, you, you, you take what I'm telling you, and, and you use it to prepare for week one and set your lineup the right way for week one. But before we start, as usual, go ahead and do, do me a favor, do the team a favor, subscribe to the World of Sports Network. We got the Facebook channel, we got the YouTube channel. You know, I always tell you this, big things are on the way. That hasn't changed, man. We're working, we're working, we're grinding. Show up and grind, baby, let's go. Show up and grind, subscribe to the World of Sports Network Facebook channel and the YouTube channel. Greatly appreciated. But as usual, no time to waste. Let's get right to it. All right, my top five quarterbacks for week one. Number one is Drew Brees. You know, the Buccaneers last year had the worst pass defense in the league. They didn't do much to upgrade it. They drafted a defensive tackle with, with their first round pick, who, mind you, was injured and might not play in week one. They did add some pass rushers, though. Vinnie Curry, Jason Pierre, Paul. But still, that, that secondary is very, very weak. And what does Drew Brees, the future first battle Hall of Famer, do to a weak secondary? Yeah, he'll carve it up. No doubt about it. You know, Michael Thomas should have a field day. I'll talk about him a little later in the, when I talk about the wide receivers. But I see Drew Brees. I see Drew Brees throwing for, you know, I see, I see him touching 300 yards and three touchdowns for Drew Brees in week one. 300 yards and three touchdowns for Drew Brees in week one. Top-rated quarterback in fantasy football for week one is Drew Brees. Number two, Phillip Rivers. The Chiefs might be without Eric Berry. He has an issue with his heel. He hasn't practiced all week. Hopefully he gets into practice soon if he wants to play against Phillip Rivers you know, on Sunday. And that, and that great supporting cast that Phillip Rivers has with Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Melvin Gordon. They just re-signed Antonio Gates, you know, who's amazing with Phillip Rivers in the red zone. Plus the, the Chargers at home. And again, Phillip Rivers has you know a great supporting cast. Every what, everything he needs, he has a good a good offensive line, a good running game, and great receivers, and a, and a dominant tight end in the red zone. Plus the, the the Chiefs D, it's hurting. They don't have much talent. You know the Chiefs D doesn't have much talent with Eric Berry. Without Eric Berry, oh man. So we're gonna we're gonna assume that Eric Berry doesn't play. I see Phillip Rivers having 350 yards, three touchdowns this week. Tom Brady is not my number. Is my number thir three. Ranked quarter, third ranked quarterback for week one. Now, the Texans D is great. You know, it's great, but they can get beat through the air. Last year, the Texans defense allowed the most fantasy points to wide receivers. You know, you like look at Tom Brady's you know squad at the receiver position right now and be like, who's he got? Well, Chris Hogan is a pretty solid receiver. You know, Gronk is obviously a, more of a receiver than anything. So, you know, Brady's going to do – Brady ha, he needs what he has what he needs to, to beat this Texas defense. The Texas defense is strong up front, you know, strong D-line. So I don't really see the Patriots trying to run against this Texas defense, but I do see them trying to, you know, throw the ball and, and beat the Texans through the air, which they can do. And, and well, Tom Brady can beat any defense through the air. But this Texas defense that is especially weak through the air, yeah, I see Tom Brady having a field day. Definitely having a field day against this Texans secondary. Fourth-ranked quarterback is Aaron Rodgers. You know, you probably say, why is Aaron Rodgers fourth? Well, he is the best quarterback in football. You know, he's back and motivated, healthy. You know, wants to prove to the world he is the best quarterback in football still. But this Bears defense did get scarier by adding Khalil Mack, and Khalil Mack is hungry. So I see this Bears defense going after Aaron Rodgers, getting after Aaron Rodgers, hitting him hard, you know, hitting him all day, you know, just bringing the heat. But still, this is Aaron Rodgers, the best quarterback in football. So I still have him in my top five. Just don't expect Aaron Rodgers to be this top-ranked scoring quarterback this week in fantasy football because, again, the Bears' defense is, is good. It's, it's, it got a lot better. They are weak through the secondary, in the secondary, so that's why I still put Aaron Rodgers in the top five. But don't expect a typical number one overall fantasy quarterback outing for Aaron Rodgers this, this week against the Bears. And number five is Kirk Cousins against the 49ers. Now, you know, Kirk has the weapons. Again, same thing with, like, Phillip Rivers. You know, like, Kirk has everything he needs. A good running game, 
good off good offensive line, a, a solid tight end in Kyle Rudolph, and two great receivers. And the Niners don't really present a threat to stop to stop Kirk. You know, they're solid up front with with Buckner and Armstead, did add Richard Sherman, you know, Ruben Foster's an emerging linebacker, but this is Kirk Cousins we're talking about, who's thrown for 4,000 yards in three straight seasons. So I don't think if a team's going to stop him, I don't think it's going to be the 49ers. So, yeah, I'm going to have Kirk as the, as the fifth-ranked quarterback in fantasy football this week. Sleeper of the week for me at the quarterback position is Jared Goff. You know, Jared Goff against Oakland. Oh, yeah, you might think, Oakland, they got Cleo Mack. No, John Green traded Cleo Mack. The Raiders don't have Cleo Mack anymore. No, no, no threat in the secondary, you know. Who, who, when you think of that Raiders D, who would you always think of? Khalil Mack. And even with Khalil Mack, they were the wor one of the worst defenses in football. Now without Khalil Mack, you know, Jared Goff with Gurley and Cooks going out there to Oakland. I see Jared Goff putting up elite QB1 numbers this week in Oakland. Hence why he's my sleeper of the week at the quarterback position. Quarterback to stay away from this week. Both quarterbacks in the Giants versus the Jaguars game. Eli and Blake Bortles. You know, Eli, oh yeah, they upgraded the weapons for Eli, you know, Saquon, obviously Odell's back healthy, but that Jaguars defense to me is the best in football, and the Giants O-line is still not great, and Eli is very, you know, prone to throw interceptions at the worst times. So I can see Eli throwing a few interceptions against the Jags D, getting sacked a bunch of times, and then Blake Bortles, obviously, is Blake Bortles. So stay away from him and against the Giants defense that, that, that upgraded and got better. So stay away from Eli, stay away from Blake Bortles. All right, let's talk about the top five running backs for week one. Number one is Alvin Kamara. You know, the Bucks D, like I mentioned with Drew Brees, is not very good. There's nobody on that Bucks D that can, that could stick with, you know, Alvin Kamara out in space. And yeah, the Bucks linebackers are pretty good with Levante David and, and Quan Alexander. But, you know, Alvin Kamara is just a special, special player. There's nobody that can cover him. And, you know, Sean Payne is going to, you know, call a lot of creative plays and a lot of Great, you know, plays to get Kamara the ball in space. So I can see him having a lot of, a lot of success in week one. And, and the Bucks can't really stop the run either. So Alvin Kamara is going to make his money out in space catching the ball and, and running. <laughs> I can see Alvin Kamara having 200 all-purpose yards this week against the Bucks D. No question. Two, David Johnson. You know, the Redskins de defensive line is tough. You know, it's definitely, it definitely got better. But I, I don't see David Johnson really, you know, making his money this week running the ball. I see him catching the ball. It is Sam Bradford. So Sam Bradford likes to dump the ball off. He loves throwing to his running backs. I can see David Johnson against this Redskins that defense that's strong on the D-line. I can see David Johnson getting out there and having, you know, eight catches this week against the Redskins. You know, again, Sam Bradford loves to dump the ball off. That's going to be the, 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 the play, the, this, the, the game plan. Get the ball to David Johnson in any way possible. When it's going to be tough to run on that Redskins front, you know, so they're going to just dump the ball off to David Johnson, put him out wide as a receiver, and just get him the ball. So, yeah, I can see David Johnson having about eight catches this week. Number three is Todd Gurley. You know, same thing with David Johnson. A lot of volume in the passing game. You know, nobody on the Raiders D. Same thing with what I mentioned with Alvin Kamara. Nobody on that Raiders defense can cover Todd Gurley in space. So, you know, Sean McVay is going to pound the ball, pound the ball with Todd Gurley first running the ball because Oakland, again, is not good at stopping the run. And then once Oakland thinks, oh, man, they're going to just keep running the ball, that's when he's going to throw the screen pass to Gurley or, you know, put Gurley as a wide receiver and a big play is going to happen. So Todd Gurley, again, Todd Gurley, I think, will have more success running the ball than, than David Johnson. But I think, again, same thing with David Johnson. Todd Gurley is also going to get a lot of catches and a lot of volume through the air. Number four is Kareem Hunt. Last year, the Chargers had the worst run defense in football. Didn't get much better. They didn't do much to upgrade it. The Chargers' strength is the secondary and the, and the pass rushers with Ingram and Bosa. Not, not the middle of the defense. Not their linebackers. Not their D tackles. You know, so again, Kareem Hunt's going to... You know, it's a rookie quarter... Uh, first... A quarterback making his first ever start, a uh, first year starting quarterback in Patrick Mahomes. I think Andy Reid's gonna, you know, try to run the ball, just run, 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 and get Patrick Mahomes comfortable. Dump the ball off to Kareem Hunt. So you know, Kareem Hunt's definitely gonna get a, a tremendous amount of target share and opportunity and volume in, in Week One against the Chargers. And fifth is Zeke. You know, the reason Zeke's so low is because the Panthers' front seven is so tough. But still, the volume that Zeke's going to get, it's just too much to pass up on. Yeah, that's why he's got to be in the top five. I mean, Zeke's going to probably get 30 total touches in week one. 20 to 25 carries, you know, five targets in the air through the, in the passing game. Because there's no weapons in the receiving game for, for, for Dak. There's no wide receivers that are a threat. So it's going to be Zeke, 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 and Zeke in that, in that front seven with Keekley and Davis and Kawan Short. 
It's tough, man. It's, they're gonna wear. They're gonna wear Zeke out, but I think Zeke's gonna enough, get enough volume to eventually wear the Panthers defense in front seven out and break off a couple big runs and end up eventually probably scoring a touchdown, maybe even two. Sleeper of the week at the running back position is Derrick Henry. You know he's playing the Dolphins, who let Dominican Sue go, cut Dominican Sue. He's one of the best run stopping defensive tackles in all football. You know, yes, yes, they do have Deion Lewis who will come in on passing downs and have plays designed for him. But that Bucks, that that Dolphins defense is weak, not special at all, especially up the middle. So I think Derrick Henry, they're gonna the Titans are gonna try to establish that running game first with Derrick Henry. I see 150 yards and two touchdowns this week for Derrick Henry. And the running back you want to avoid. I have to preach this to you guys. James Conner. Le'Veon Bell's not playing. Everyone's like, oh, let me pick up James Conner. I got to go pick up James Conner. He's going to start at running back for the Steelers this week. That is true. But here's what you guys don't understand. James Conner is, is not Le'Veon Bell. James Conner is a good running back, solid running back. You know, coming out of college, if he didn't have cancer, he might have been a first or second round pick at the running back position. But he, he's, Le, he's not Le'Veon Bell. He doesn't catch the ball like Le'Veon Bell. He doesn't run as patiently between the tackles as Le'Veon Bell. Defenses don't have to account for James Conner the way they have to account for Le'Veon Bell. You know, you don't have to, you know, James Conner out wide on a linebacker or safety isn't as big of a mismatch as it is with Le'Veon Bell. So the Steelers aren't going to do the same things with James Conner that they do with Le'Veon Bell. So to, if you have Le'Veon Bell and, you, and you're starting Derek Conner or James Conner, over Le'Veon Bell this week, expecting the same production, you're, you're going to be rudely, rudely misinformed. You've been rudely misinformed. You're going to be sadly mistaken. And it's going to be a rude awakening for you because, again, it's quite simple. James Conner is not Le'Veon Bell. So avoid James Conner. If you have other running backs that, are, that you have that you can put, put in over James Conner, don't do it. Only reason you might put in James Conner, and I'll be okay with that, is if you had Le'Veon Bell. Other than that, don't be go reaching on the waiver wire, dropping a player, and putting James Conner in your lineup over somebody that you know could be more productive, just because it's James Conner in Le'Veon Bell's role. It's not, no, it's not, it's not going to work like that because James Conner is not Le'Veon Bell. Top five wide receivers: number one, obviously, Antonio Brown, best wide receiver in, in football, matchup proof because he gets the consistent volume, consistent targets, and there's nobody that can stop him, double team or triple team. I mean, they triple team AB every every week, <laughs> and he still gets those crazy, you know, crazy amount of catches. Crazy volume, crazy targets, great route runner. And he's playing the Browns, so again, it's not even matchup proof because it's a great matchup for him. So, yeah, no question. Antonio Brown, number one receiver in fantasy, especially week one, but obviously all year to me. <laughs> so we'll just always say A.B. number one. But, yeah, A.B. is number one this week. Two, A.J. Green. Now, the Colts secondary is bad. They've lost Rashawn Melvin, who was an emerging corner. You know, they let him go to Oakland. Vontae Davis is no longer there. There's nobody that can cover A.J. Green one-on-one -on, -one on that Colts secondary. So, you know, Dalton's going to throw it up to him. Dalton throws it up to him, even if it isn't someone good covering him. So now that nobody can cover A.J. Green, he's going to be running wild in that Colts secondary. You know, A.J. Green is going to just throw it to him, toss it up to him, whatever. I can see A.J. Green getting, you know, 15 targets. In week one against that Colts secondary, because Andy Dalton's gonna look at him every time and see, oh, nobody's on him, okay? Because nobody can cover AJ Green on that Colts defense. So yeah, AJ Green's number two, three. Michael Thomas, Bucks again. I've, I've been saying this all show. The Bucks have a terrible pass defense. You know, Michael Thomas usually averages about ten targets a game. I don't see that changing in week one against the Bucks. You know, they're gonna run the ball obviously with Kamara. They're gonna throw the ball to Kamara, but Drew Brees I can see throwing the ball a lot just in general this game because again. Bucks D is just the bat. The pass defense is probably the worst in football. So Michael Thomas is going to get his, no doubt. With the 10 targets that he's going to get against this Bucks pass defense, oh, look at uh, crazy production for Michael Thomas in week one. Number four, Devontae Adams. Now, A Rod to Devontae Adams is the new A Rod to Jordy Nelson. You know, the Bears' front seven is tough, but their secondary is where they're weak at. You know, the corners are not very great. Safeties, they're okay, but not great. So I get I don't even I don't even see the Packers trying to run the ball that much against this Bears front seven. I see Aaron Rodgers trying to get the ball out quick with, with Khalil Mack, you know, coming fast and furious towards him. So I see Devontae Adams getting a lot of catches in week one, and I see him scoring a touchdown in week one. You know, when when the when the Packers get, you know, near the red zone, that's what they do. They throw that back shoulder fade. Aaron Rodgers loves that back shoulder fade. They can only go to two people, either Jimmy Graham or or Devontae Adams not. And I'm going to bet that one touchdown goes to Devontae Adams in week one. And number five is Keaton Allen against the Chiefs. The Chiefs lost Marcus Peters, possibly no Eric Berry. You know, so Keaton Allen's going to get his catches. You know, he, I think after AB, Keaton Allen's probably the best route runner in football. So create separation so easily. 
And he is Phillip Rivers' number one target. High octane offense in a game that you figure is going to be a lot of throwing from, from, from Phillip Rivers. Probably a high scoring affair. So I see Keenan Allen, you know, getting probably seven or eight catches in week one, over 100 receiving yards, just because of the targets that he's going to get and the volume that he's going to get. Again, you always want receivers that get a lot of targets. And, get a lot, and same thing with running backs, you know, a lot of volume. You don't want to, you don't want to, I'm not a fan of the boomer bust receivers that get one or two targets a game and you got to hope that it's a, it's a, they catch a deep bomb to have any type of value. No, I like, I like receivers like Keenan Allen and Michael Thomas who get eight to 10 targets a game. So you know they're always going to get the, the, the target share and the opportunities to, to make plays and, and offer you value. And sleeper of the week at the wide receiver position is <laughs> Odell Beckham Jr. <laughs> I know, o Odell's a sleeper. That's crazy, right? But yeah, he's going up against Jalen Ramsey, man. That's a tough matchup. That's a tough matchup. And again, Odell is probably matchup proof as well. But this is Jalen Ramsey we're talking about. He's motivated to prove that Odell is, that he's a better, the better player than Odell because he didn't talk all that smack in the offseason about, about Eli and about all these quarterbacks. Now, now Jalen Ramsey has to come out and back it up. I think Eli. I think Odell will still get his, get a couple catches, get it, you know, you know, do what he has to do. But I, I just don't see Odell, you know, breaking off that big play that we've come so accustomed to see Odell making and breaking. So you got to be cautious with Odell in Week One again. He upside is there, so if you have money, you got to start him. You got to start Odell regardless. Odell Beckham Jr. But just be cautious going up against Jalen Ramsey and that and that fearsome Jaguar secondary. And the receiver you want to avoid is DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, it sounds crazy. It's DeAndre Hopkins, top five receiver in football, maybe top three. But he's going up against the, uh, going up against the Patriots. And, you know, the Patriots, what, what does Bill Belichick do? Always takes away the team's best weapon, whether it be the running back or the wide receiver. And and in this situation, it's the wide receiver. You know, DeAndre Hopkins is the Texans' best weapon. So I see Bill Belichick doing whatever it takes to neutralize DeAndre Hopkins and making someone else on that Texans team beat him. He's going to double-team DeAndre, you know, just prevent him from making an impact, especially in the red zone. So I would just avoid DeAndre Hopkins for, for week one. This is probably the only time you avoid DeAndre Hopkins, but I guess the Patriots and, and the genius of Bill Belichick, I, I would be cautious with DeAndre Hopkins. I would probably avoid him if I were you. Top five tight ends, Travis Kelsey, you know, Chargers have a good D-line, a good secondary, but they're, you know, they're weak at when it comes to coverage, you know, linebackers that can cover. And they put Kelsey all over the formation, obviously, you know, wide receiver, backfield, in the slot. So he's going to get his catches, you know, get his targets. And again, there's nobody on that Chargers defense, especially the linebacker position that can cover him. So Travis Kelsey's the number one tight end for week one. Number two, Trey Burton. Again, same thing with the Chargers. The Packers have no linebackers that can cover Trey Burton. And he's playing the Travis Kelsey role in that Chicago Bears offense. So they're going to move him all over the formation as well. Slot, backfield, out wide. So, you know, Trey Burton's going to get a lot of targets and a lot of catches as well. And he's, an, he's a nice little athlete. So once he gets the ball in his hands, yard after catch, you know, possibilities are, are there as well. So Tra Trey Burton's number two tight end for week one. Three, Delaney Walker. You know, Dolphins linebackers, they stink. And Delaney Walker's a huge part of this Titans offense. You know, Corey Davis is now the number one receiver for Marcus Mariota. But who does Marcus Mariota trust the most? Delaney Walker. When you need a first down, Delaney Walker. When you, when you need a, a reliable play, Delaney Walker. When you need somebody to, you know, catch the ball with, with two defenders on their back, Delaney Walker. You need a touchdown in the red zone, Delaney Walker. So, yeah, Corey Davis will get his targets at the, at the wide receiver position. But, again, it's a trust factor. Marcus Mariota trusts Delaney Walker. Hence why he's the number, thir number three tight end for week one. For Gronk, the reason Gronk is so low is because, you know, Texans got Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew. And the reason that the Cardinals last year were the best defense in terms of stopping tight ends was because of Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badger. Now Tyron Matthew's on the Texans. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to say to Tyron Matthew, Honey Badger, you go line up with Gronk, you cover Gronk, don't worry about anything else, just focus on stopping Gronk and play man coverage on Gronk all day long. And Tyron Matthew is great at, at man coverage, you know, great at covering tight ends. I still think Gronk is a little bit strong, too strong for him, and he's going to try to bully him around, but it's not going to be as easy as you think, and that's why I don't put Gronk in any, I don't put Gronk as the number one tight end in fantasy this week. You should, people will be like, what's Gronk? But no, it's a bad matchup for Gronk with that, with that Texans, you know, secondary and, and and especially the Honey Badger and Tyron Matthews. So be cautious with Gronk. And fifth is Kyle Rudolph. You know, always a threat in the red zone. Kirk loves his tight ends in the red zone. So, you know, once it comes down to red zone time, Kirk's going to be looking for the big guy, Kyle Rudolph. I, I see Kyle Rudolph scoring a touchdown in week one. Sleeper of the week is Jordan Reed. You know, Jordan Reed is, a, is an elite tight end, one healthy, very, very talented, but the problem has been injuries. 
if he's healthy now, starting week one, full, you know, fully healthy. And last year, the Cardinals, who Drew Reed is playing week one, were the best at stopping tight ends. They lost Honey Badger, like I just mentioned with Grock. They lost the Honey Badger. They lost Tyron Matthews. So now there's nobody on that Cardinals defense that can cover an elite athletic tight end. And plus, Alex Smith loves his tight ends. Jordan Reed, I could see him blowing up in week one. But be cautious because of the health. So I'm going to put him as a sleeper. But if you got Jordan Reed, fire him up. Start him in all lineups. And tight end you should avoid is Greg Olson. Greg Olson is going up against a Cowboys defense, which strength is at the linebacker position with Jalen Smith and Sean Lee. You know, they know Greg Olson is Cam Newton's number one target. There's not many threats in, at the wide receiver position for, for Carolina. You got Christian McCaffrey coming out of the backfield, and you got Greg Olson. So I could definitely see Sean Lee. Actually, I could see Jalen Smith, the more athletic tight end, matching up one-on-one -on -one with Greg Olson. And Greg Olson, yes, yeah, still reliable, but he's lost a step athletically. So I could see that them linebackers neutralizing Greg Olson. So I, I would avoid Greg Olson this week in week one. And last but not least, top five defenses for week one. We're going with the Ravens, number one. You know, they're playing Nathan Peterman. Come on. Who last year has only started through five interceptions. You know, Ravens, self-explanatory. They're, they're the number one defense for week one. Number two is the Lions. They're going up against a rookie quarterback, Sam Darnold, who's making his first ever start on the road in Detroit. You know, Detroit now has a, a head coach, Matt Patricia, who knows defense, former defensive coordinator. He's going to bring it all, throw it all at Sam Darnold and see how the kid reacts. I can see a lot of sacks, a lot of, a lot of interceptions for Sam Darnold. Again, I like Sam Darnold. He's very, very poised, but still, it is his first ever start on the road. You got to expect the worst. You got to expect a, a significant amount of rookie mistakes for Sam Darnold in week one. That's why the Lions are a top-ranked defense for week one. Three are the Saints going up against Ryan Fitzpatrick. Come on now. Uh, come on. Bucks o line's not great. Saints are just going to, you know, Marshawn, Marshawn Lattimore is going to shut down Mike Evans, lock him up all day. Ryan Fitzpatrick's not going to have much time to throw the ball with that, with, with Cameron Jordan and Davenport coming after him. And there's nobody else for him to throw to if Mike Evans is, is out of the picture. Yeah, Godwin and Deshaun Jackson. Well, come on. This Saints defense is so much better. Now it's an asset instead of a liability. Yeah, definitely a top-ranked defense for week one. Four Panthers, you know, again, you know, with, with Zeke. That is that is Zeke's offense. The Cowboys' offense is Zeke. But I think the Panthers are going to neutralize Zeke enough that they're going to just make Dak try to have to throw the ball. And if, you, if Dak needs to throw the ball to win the game, the odds are in the defense's favor. Right now, Panthers are the defense that Dak's going to be facing. And I think the Panthers at first are going to do a good job of stopping that run, uh, you know, not allowing running room for Zeke. And Dak's going to have to start throwing the ball. And when Dak starts throwing the ball, bad things are going to happen for that Cowboys offense. And last defense, the fifth defense is the Titans against the Dolphins. <laughs> Who scares you on that Dolphins offense? Tannehill is prone to make mistakes. Offense line is weak for Miami, you know. Not really skilled, skilled at the wide receiver position. Position. You got some. You got some fast wide receivers. You got some gadget wide receivers. You got some, you know, slot wide receivers that have good hands. But some of that can really beat you and really make you have nightmares. No. So that Titans defense got better too. You know, they added Malcolm Butler. Have a defensive minded head coach now, Mike Vrabel. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't see that Dolphins offense doing much against that Titans defense. Sleeper defense of the week is the Patriots. You know, they seen Deshaun Watson last year. Remember that. Remember when Deshaun Watson went off against the Patriots? Now Bill Belichick knows what Deshaun Watson does, what he can do. He's not going to allow that to happen again. He's going to take away DeAndre Hopkins. He's going to stop that running game. And he's going to come after Deshaun Watson and throw different looks at Deshaun Watson and see how the kid reacts to it. But I'm going to give the edge to the Patriots defense. And the defense you want to avoid, the Bears defense. Yes, this is still a good defense that got better. Khalil Mack obviously makes that defense significantly better. But this is still Aaron Rodgers we're talking about, the best quarterback in football. You know, the Bears might get after A-Rod, you know, hit him a few times, get after him, you know, sack him, whatnot. But this is still Aaron Rodgers, the bad man Aaron Rodgers, best quarterback in football. He's going to make the Bears pay eventually. So I wouldn't want to depend on the Bears defense in week one going up against Aaron Rodgers, the best quarterback in football, who's healthy and finally back on the field, motivated to prove he's the best quarterback in football.